Now it's time to transition into the actual networking portion for the rest of this course. And what we're going to do in this nugget is set up the operational mode and how we can navigate around the operational mode. But there's also some important things that we're going to talk about in this nugget, like help and context sensitive help. This is going to be critical to understanding how we can actually use the power of Junos. So in this nugget, let's set up the different modes within Junos, like the operational mode versus the config mode, and then talk about how the operational mode is actually used. Let's get going. So out of the gate, let's jump into a quiz question. Which mode am I in right now in Junos? Look at the screen. Tell me which mode do you think I'm in? The answer would be the free BSD mode. And how do I know that I'm in the free BSD mode? Because it ends with the percent sign right there. That tells me I'm not actually in the Junos mode yet. So let's do what it told us to do and get into Junos. What it did is it told us in that little initial console out prompt, from the management daemon, it said type CLI to enter the Junos CLI. So I'll type CLI, and here we go. It jumps me into the Junos CLI. Now, this master here, this is in case we're getting into a virtual chassis scenario, and we're going to talk more about that when it comes time to talk about how interfaces are actually laid out. That, that, no, that doesn't make sense. Like, wait, m virtual chassis and interfaces, what does that even mean? Don't worry. We're going to get there. I promise it's going to be cool, and it's going to be exciting, and it's going to be fun. Just know that this master is all about where we are within a stack of Juniper devices. So now we've noticed that the output of my little console output has changed quite a bit. It went from the root at the routing engine with a percent sign. We typed the CLI command, and it moves us into what's called the operational mode of the Junos CLI. Now, within Junos, there are two modes. There is operational mode, and there is config mode. The names kind of live up to what they do. The config mode is, well, where you set configurations. And operational mode is where you operate your Juniper device. This is where you actually check on how is it operating right now. This is where we monitor and maintain the Juniper operating system as opposed to configure the Juniper operating system. You can think of operational mode as where you type show commands, where you type ping or trace routes. Config commands is where you actually set the configurations themselves for things like protocols and IP addresses. So the big giveaway right here is when we see the caret right here on the node, we are in operational mode. Now the next giveaway here is that we have not set up an initial configuration. How do I know that? Because typically it would tell us our username, which is root, at host name. What is the host name of this device? And this device right now doesn't have a host name because we haven't set it. So all it's telling us right now is our username. However, if I had a username of something like Knox and the host name was something like switch one, it would look something like this, switch one and then the greater than. And this is how we know we're in our operational mode. Now you may be comparing this to other vendors right now. Like, wait a minute, there was a user mode and then a privileged mode where we could perform even more commands and then there's a configuration mode where we can set configuration modes. This is comparing it to things like Cisco or Dell or Arista. In Juniper, privileges are exclusively compared to the user account themselves in something called classes. We're going to talk more about that again when we get into the initial configuration. For now, just know that there are only two modes, operational and config mode, and we control what users are allowed to do with that based on their class that they're assigned to. So now we know we're in the operational mode right here with the little greater than. How do we explore what are all the things that we can do? Well, like I said, operational mode is all about show commands or ping requests or things like that. And one of the first things that you should know, wherever you are in the command line, you can always type question mark to get help of what commands are even available to you in the first place. So here we can see some pretty important operational commands. The first one I want to point out is show. This is where we can type all of our show commands, obviously from the operational mode, we want to perform operational commands like show commands. And keeping in mind that we are the root account, we have keys to the kingdom right now, so there's nothing we can't do or type or any show commands that we want to type. So before I dig into some of these other commands, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type show and then question mark again, and now it shows me what all show commands I can type. This is why they call it context sensitive help. We're now in the context of show commands, and then we've basically said help. 
help, what can I do next? So it does say right here that I'm only displaying 31% of all of the options available to me. If I press spacebar, it'll jump down to the next 30% or so. Then spacebar again, and it shows me the next 30%, and then we're done. So now we can see all of the show commands that I can type here. And obviously there's a lot of different operational commands that we can type. And it gets even more complicated as we dig into these anymore. One of the more popular show commands that you're going to type over and over and over again is show interfaces. Let me hit question mark to show you our options again. And we can see, we can look at the individual interfaces. We can look at their sub interfaces denoted by the little dot. We're going to talk more about that later. We can look at GRE interfaces, loopback interfaces, or we can look at some more important details about it. The big option that I want to point out to you is terse. Show interfaces terse in Juniper terms is basically the same output of show IP interface brief if you're coming from a Cisco world. First, we list the physical interface. Then we list the logical interfaces. These are our sub interfaces. We find out if it is administratively up. Then we find out if it has a link or a patch cable plugged into it, meaning that the port itself is operating. Then importantly is the protocol. Now you're thinking of things like IGPs or maybe BGP or something like that. The protocol world in the Juniper world is actually what's called the family. And this is a major, major talking point that could overwhelm you with information if we were to dig into this right now. We're gonna have an entire nugget dedicated to just the protocol coming up when it comes time to actually configure interfaces themselves. Just for now, notice that this EX2200 device, again, that is an enterprise grade switch, has the default setting that all of our interfaces are set to be an ethernet switch, meaning they're a layer two access port. So the command that we typed here to get this information was show interfaces terse. And that is a command that you wanna drill into your brain right now. It is the equivalent of show IP interface brief. So if I hit space for a few times right here, we'll go all the way down to the bottom of these and we can see all of the information, all of the interfaces that we have. Another major talking point that I wanna point out when we're navigating through the Juniper CLI is that we can auto complete some of our commands. So if I type SHO and then tab, it automatically completed the show command. If I type enter and then tab, it automatically completes the interfaces. If I type T and then tab, well, it tells me, wait a minute, T could actually result in a couple of different things. It could result in an interface name that begins with a T. In this case, right here, that's tap. I can actually see that from my show interfaces terse output from above. Then it tells me the actual options themselves are tap or terse. So when I typed tab with just a T here, there could have been multiple matches for auto completion. And it tells me what those matches were. What should I have actually typed in here instead of just throwing an error at me? The other cool thing that it does is it puts me right back on the CLI where I was before. So I have show interfaces T already up here available to me. And now I can see what my options are to finish this out. If I add a T, now I've made this unique enough to where I can type tab. And now I have show interfaces terse. And there we go. I can hit spacebar and get to the bottom of my show interfaces terse. Now I did say we were going to explore some of the other important commands outside of show. And I do want to bring these up right now in front of you. First up is configure. This is how we enter configuration mode, and that's what the entire next nugget is all about. So I'm not gonna talk much more about the configure command, just know that that's how you enter configuration mode. Next up is ping. Obviously, this is going to be a major and important one for us if we want to ping remote IP addresses and validate that our network configurations and connectivity at layer three is actually working. Then we have SSH or Telnet. This is where we can SSH or Telnet into further boxes that are away from us. We can maybe use this to log into a device that's one hop away or multiple hops away, or we could just test if other ports are open using the Telnet. We also have Traceroute. Traceroute does what you think it does. It actually traces the path from one hop to the next by decrementing a TTL. And just like Traceroute has always worked, it receives a request, an ICMP response back saying that the TTL is expired. It knows what hop away it was. Now, two really important ones that I want to spend a little extra time on here is request. Request is where we're actually going to perform a lot of monitoring and maintenance items for our Junos operating system. You saw this already when we factory defaulted the device. We had to do request system zero-wise. This is also how we actually shut down the device itself. 
Juniper is a rare device in that you can't just unplug it because it is running free BSD at the end of the day and real operating systems don't like it when you just pull the power on these items. With Juniper, you have to do a graceful shutdown and to do that, you would use request system halt. Now we're gonna cover this and actually demonstrate this when we get to monitoring and maintaining Juniper devices. But know that request is a very important section where we do things like factory default the device, shut down the device, or perform an operating system upgrade. That is also done in the request section. Next is set. And you're about to type set more than you've ever thought you would ever type set. Not from the operational section, but also the configuration section. And we're gonna get into that when we start doing our initial config. Just know that set is where all config changes begin. So if I type set and then question mark, we can see this is where we can do some important things like set the date. So we can set the date and time in this exact format as it's specified right here, or we could tell it to use NTP. But the kicker here is if we say set date NTP, we have to have an NTP server already configured in the Junos configuration, which is not something we've done up till this point. That's what the initial config nuggets are gonna be all about. Just know that this is an important command to know, the set command from the operational mode of Junos. The last important command that I want to show you and leave you on is setting up the next nugget, and that's how you can view the running configuration on this device. Now, you may be coming from other vendors where it's show run, and that's pretty simple. Here on Junos, it is show configuration. As I tab complete show configuration, I'll press enter here, and this is what the running config of Juniper looks like. This doesn't look like anything you've ever seen before, does it? That's why the next thing is gonna be how we can actually navigate the different tiers and hierarchies of the Junos configuration. In the meantime, that's been understanding the Junos operational CLI. We've covered a whole lot of info in this one, like how to navigate show commands, context sensitive help, auto completion with tab, operational tools like ping and traceroute, telnet and SSH, and then even what request and set are all about. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thank